Ta-da! Hello, I'm Bettina Frankel from the Art of Balance Yoga Massage and I'm bringing you a little back ease sequence from the studio this morning. It's a Sunday morning. I don't know what time it is for you. Um, and we just had our PJ yoga practice and I was a bit cold so I um, came up with these sexy socks. Anyway, without further ado, I shall assume that you have a mat underneath you or simply somewhere where you can um, be undisturbed about 10-15 minutes and then this will be um, yoga sequence or yoga practice that you can do when your lower back is a little niggly and you just need to ease into that a little um, yes or if you have a slower practice or a shorter practice and you need an add-on you can do this of course as well so let's come to lie down I will take my sexy socks off in a moment, but for the time being, I just like as you can bend your knees gently, you can bring your knees together, lie down and just feeling into your back. Notice how is your, your back showing up this morning. And that's it. Nice, and then just noticing that there is a gap between your lower back and the mat, so not filled out completely. And just being comfortable, noticing that. If this is all the practice you do today, thank yourself that you've made the commitment to show up, show up on the mat, show up for yourself. You're welcome to set an intention. Nice, and then just slowly separating the knees, so you're in that lying down position here. And then I slowly invite you to see if you can flatten out the spine. So what movement you need to do to flatten out, yeah, so there's no curve. And then you let that go, that curve comes back. And then you flatten out and you let the curve come back. You flatten out, curve comes back. Now let's make that conscious. Just notice that it is a gentle pelvic tilt as you do that. And then notice also with what muscles you're actually initiating that movement. That's it. It is your pelvic floor, isn't it? And it is your toilet muscle and it is those lower belly muscles. You can even bring your hands there and just go. Oh, is this what I'm feeling? Is this the truth? Is this what, yeah, this is what happens. And so just gently easing your back into the flexion, the roundedness, and then coming back into that gentle extension. So there's a natural curve of your spine. And of course, also energetically, we're working into the first and into the second chakra. So energetically into that lower chakra for the sense of, yeah, keep going, keep going. You can, you can make it a little bigger, a little like, oh yeah, what if I use a little bit more oomph and the table lifts a little and then really come into that um, sensation where there is perhaps more of an extension, more of a gap. Yeah, beautiful. So that first chakra that is related to our sense of safety, you know, sense of security, that's it. And our second chakra, our well, hips a little higher, it's that whole idea of, and we've talked about this before, um, about your sense of joy and laughter and creative self-expression. Nice. And then releasing. And then the other shape I'd like you to feel into is our windscreen wipers. I really seriously have to take those socks off in a moment. You can have your arms to the side or overhead if you want a bit of a shoulder opening. Yeah, so you're comfortable. Find that spot that feels relevant to you this morning or wherever you practice. Feet a little wider than the mat. And then coming into what I call windscreen wipers. So the knees go to one side, head goes to the other. And we can make this flowing with our breath, inhale back to center, 
and then exhale over to the other side. And of course, it produces a different sensation whether you have your hands to the side or whether you have your hands overhead. And so just slowly moving. You can do this more vigorous, but remember this morning's practice or the idea is to feel into lower back, easing lower back. Yeah, that whole lower area, that whole lower, lower hip, lower back, sacrum. If it feels good to stay on one side, then stay on one side. I have my knees to the right and my hip to the left. And then I feel into that area. It's like, what's my intention here? To bring some softness, to bring some awareness into that area. So for me, it registers around here, sort of that oh, QL area. And it's like, okay, if I stay here for a little, my right knee is comfortably on the floor, my left knee sort of dangles there. How is the situation changing if I bring my heels closer to my buttocks? No, they go somewhere else. That's not useful for that particular idea. Oh, further down, no, it's more quadriceps, more um, front of the hip. Where I was, was just intuitively, hmm, nice and juicy. And then perhaps the other side. Or perhaps if you want to be needing this more vigorously, then bring your breath into the equation, even bring your ujjayi breath into the equation. You can, of course, make this into a full yin idea. But for today's practice, we just feel into this and we breathe and we bring our awareness into the area where we need to bring in some vitality and some ease. Yeah? And this happens on a feeling sense. I'm not telling you exactly where you feel this, but you have had an intention for doing this practice this morning. Ah, and then slowly releasing. Now this could go on for much longer. You choose the timing of this. And then that's coming to Apanasana. Nose to knees. Exhale, lifting up. And inhale, curling out. Beautiful. Now this is feel into it anatomically. This is flexion of the whole of the spine but remember we want to have this area here stimulated and healed and perhaps depending on where your wellness sits your spine would like flexion yeah what we do here exhale lifting up inhale coming out or it's more happy inner back bend so let's explore this a little further yeah prepare for your bridge pose i will take those socks off because that that might irritate you. <laughs> might irritate me as well. All right. So, bridge pose. And we are going to come into bridge pose. But we make it a little mini bridge pose. So, soles of the feet come to the floor. Ankles touch. Feet, um, heels touch. Ankles, big toe. And then bring your buttocks as close as you can to your heels or your heels to your buttocks. Good. And then inhale. Just squeezing the knees together. Push into the feet. Keep the thighs together if you can and lifting up. And then notice what happens. Yes, this is, we often do this because of that quadricep, front of the thigh sensation, that hip flexor. But notice what's starting to happen here in your lower back. This is when you go, oh yeah, okay, I can feel it here. Often the lower back, if it's about the forward bend, if it happened maybe in a twist and in a lift, then this will feel alleviating. And the forward bend will feel not so good. And then slowly coming out. So find that feel good place and then we're coming up again. And then you monitor and go, okay, if I, if I lift up higher, of course I can exert a little bit more. Um, need a bit more strength, your quadriceps, your buttocks are engaged, belly engaged. But you go, oh, in which range do I need to move, do I need to be to make this feel good? And then releasing. Brilliant. Apanasana again. And, and nice and slow. And now it's probably like, oh, very slow. So if there's a lot of tenderness, you can't just go up and down. You have to be really, really mindful of what you... And this has given you a, a huge clue already of what your back needs. This is your flexion. Like, oh, feels good or doesn't so... And this bridge pose is your, is your extension. So I would continue now with the feet wide, with the traditional bridge pose. Um, 
slowly flattening the spine, exhale. So you've got your pelvic tilt here and then lifting up, lifting up, lifting all the way up. We're not doing this for strength building or for a particular chest opening or back bend, which is of course it is, but how high can you lift? How, how strong can that extension be? How easeful does that feel? And it just gives you a clue and then you can come down, coming out. In class, we often do this with the arms as well. So flatten the spine, exhale, then inhale, lifting. Remember, it's not so much about your highest expression in your back bend. It's about that spine mobility and that feeling into your lower back and giving you an idea as to what aggravates your um, tenderness and what alleviates. Beautiful. Yeah, so maybe this is just half or maybe you come all the way up and go, oh, the higher I go and the more these muscles are actually working and protecting, the more easeful it feels. You want to warm up and open up here the whole time. Yes, you can do this with breath. Inhale, lifting up, but with awareness and then curling the spine down. So starting from the top, curling down, lower body slash, and then we're bringing in that tilt and we're slowly coming up. Yeah, to what extent? We want, just wanting to find out what's going on here and we want to find some ease. Beautiful. You can keep that going. Go, oh, that's feel really good. Or maybe you didn't. Maybe the, maybe the flexion. This is more useful. The other shape, the other movement while we're in lying down is, I don't know, we've done this before. We've done this in, in this morning's class. One leg is straight, so I have my left leg straight. And my right leg, my top leg, casually, because for what we want, comes over the body and it sort of rests here, maybe it rests there, maybe in your case, like, well, this is where it is. So maybe you have a sofa or you have a few props that support yourself. If we want to play with how does this, how does that top leg need to be to make us feel good in that tender area, you could grab onto the toes, you could grab onto here and go, mm, the more I actually pull this up, oh, the more I can feel this is where, this is where I need to hold for a little, yeah? Buttocks come into the equation, that whole hip hair area, quadratus lumborum, if you want to intensify things, turn the head to the other side so you get that full body twist. Yeah, maybe you have a belt, that you want to swing around that leg. Maybe, can we hold on? You know, I mean, I'm moving into my flexibility here. I'm not demonstrating this to say, oh, look, this is what you have to do. It's like, no, look, this is what you can do if you feel like you need to make space here and you need to bring awareness and vitality into, no, oh, no, I'm putting my hand there, you can't see. I'll show you on the other side, stay there or come with me and go, oh, that was enough. Yeah. Bringing that over, and this could be like this, you could have it bent, but see how it's different. I'm deliberately saying, if you can, keep the legs straight so you get that hamstring. Maybe that's contributing to your tenderness around here. Yeah, so I would hold that foot. I'm not the most flexible person, you all know. My hips need work. Ah, oh, this is sort of okay, okay, yeah, easy into it. Yeah, we don't need to need the, the Sanskrit names here. We're just feeling into it and feeling, softening, softening. Keeping safe, working our centre line, so you're keeping a connection to core. And then you play and you go, hmm. For me to feel this in my lower back, I could maybe easily let my top knee bend. Maybe my lower knee as well. And then you go, ah, this is nice. I can feel... The tissue, maybe it is a connective tissue idea. The connective tissue is what needs to soften. Then you make this more into a yin shape and you go, I find that comfortable spot and I just let time pass. Or you make this into something active. Where is the draft coming from here? Nice. Of course, it's a beautiful twist. Of course, if, I'm not saying, you know, it could be for your chest, you could do this, the other intention could be a chest opening. Beautiful, very nice. Beautiful, and then slowly you're welcome to release. 
And so by now, just leave the door, Julia, thank you. Just by now you may have felt that this is enough. This has been enough stimulation, especially with that forward bend, you know, this is your forward bend. And a little bit of mobility and a little bit of movement. Perhaps that was all your, your lower back just needed, could handle, could take. Yeah. I mean, there, we could do lots more. One more, if the extension and the strength building is useful, I mean, it's always useful strength building, but if in that acuter or acuter state, froggy lifts. Yeah. So, by Kanasana, yeah, soles of the feet together here. And then perhaps bring them where it's comfortable, however, if you can, for more therapeutic, heels as close to your perineum as you can. Beautiful. And then seeing if the soles of the feet can open like a hook. I'll show you front of in a moment. And then you keep your knees as wide as possible and you come into that bridge pose here, into those froggy lifts in the hips up. And this is slightly different than your bridge, yeah? Your hips are externally rotated and then slowly coming out. I'll just shuffle along. Wasn't that kind? The family just told me that coffee has arrived. So I give you more attention than I give my coffee. You should feel VIP. Exhale, lift up. Oh, and then slowly come out. Now, as always in yoga, nothing to be achieved, yeah? You feel into, if you go, oh, this is just, this is my height. A little higher up, this could be your height. Or maybe you do it for back strength. You go, I'm going to stay here, Bettina. I open up the soles of the feet so the knees stay right. Or you can come, make this dynamically. Exhale up, inhale down. I will always include a little moment where you stay here and you just go, I'm going to work on my breath, softening, working into the strength here, buttocks slow back. Beautiful. And then slowly releasing, we do that little counterbalance. But that, if you really have a sore lower back, that's not going to go dynamically like this. You're going to go all oh, very slow, very slow and tingling. The agility, the mobility needs to be practiced. And that's what gives that oh, extra stimulation. Of course, if it's very acute, you need, you need someone to have a look at it. One more. Froggy lifts. Yeah, and then aiming to pretend you're trapped between a glass or two glass planes and you can only shift from left to right. Now anatomically not a big shift is possible as you know. Practice with me. We have done this before, we've experienced it. So it's not a wiggle from left to right. If you lower back sword, this wouldn't be possible anyway. It's just a, a, a slide and a slide gliding. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Yeah. You know, if you do this for strength building and just a bit of mobility in the lower back, beautiful. You can come up again five more times. But initially, this could be enough. And this could be your, your counterbalance. You know, this is your forward bend. Notice it. This is rounding. What we've done before, it's extending. Beautiful. Okay. One last. Totally. That comes to mind. Do you know nothing flattens out and gets in that whole area more than your happy baby pose? But not the traditional happy baby pose, yeah? So traditionally the babies go buttocks lift. That's your flexion. We want flattening and broadening. So make sure you can actually, I don't know if it looks funny, but you can actually see the spine or feel the spine flat and the sacrum is on the floor. Yeah, so this is the buttocks don't come up when you do that. It's not the true heavy baby, not how babies do it. Hold the outside edge of the foot or edges of the feet. The alignment here, knee, heel, and then draw that knee. Have some oomph on that foot and draw that knee back. With the spine flat. Oh, that gives that space. And of course, you get that whole hip idea as well. Notice, this is a different sensation. So heels towards your buttocks is a different sensation than with this beautiful alignment. There we go. And then drawing down. But broadening the back. So your tailbone wants to flatten, 
feel it's a feeling sensation there's nothing wrong with doing it you know if we do a counterbalance if we want a roundedness we've got this oh, and if you have a kind person moving with you just let them give you a bit of oomph if you can't hold your feet you hold your ankles oh, in the absence of that you just do this spine is flat there's a bit of activity in the belly oh beautiful and once we started we can't stop but i have to promise you it's a short session yeah of course a bit of a, a, bit of a circle here a bit of a circle between the <laughs> massaging circle with the knees translates into the back and then we change direction ah, and i'm gonna put this up after my coffee No, I don't normally teach in those green pants because they're too fat, but I just like the colour. <laughs> I do hope this was useful. I will come up to see to, to look at you. I hope this was useful, beneficial. There is so much more we can do, we could do. But I'd like to think, you know, if you have, if you want to avoid any you know, nigglings in your lower back if you want to ease it, if you want to just get some vitality, some juiciness, some spaciousness, some beautiful supportive qualities into that whole first, second chakra area, then that's what you do. Continue with another practice. Join me in another time. Subscribe to the channel, come to class, enjoy your life. And hopefully we can see each other soon in person and give each other a hug. And I know this stays on the channels and wherever you are. Enjoy your practice, enjoy your life. Namaste. Thank you for joining me. Very sprinkles. Enjoy coffee too. Oh, it's going to be cold. <laughs>